Is AI-induced bifurcation inevitable? Now, I'll be honest, for a while, I was thinking it wasn't going to happen. I was pretty optimistic. I was very confident that we would not see this at all. But I've been, uh, I've been hearing some interesting conversations recently. Let's put it that way. I've been hearing some people talk about different ideas, some different philosophies and ways of doing things. And it's starting to look like maybe this will happen and maybe it might be inevitable if the behavior of society continues to go the way that it is. So I'm just going to break everything down from first principles, kind of like share my point of view, and I'll let you make your own decisions from there. So obviously, you're probably familiar with this curve by now. This is the Kurzweil curve. This is the cost of information technology over time. We have been tracking this data all the way since the 1890s. And uh, this is exactly what Ray Kurzweil used to predict our current moment in time. He actually predict where we are right now with the development of artificial intelligence, which is amazing, actually, that he was able to do something like that. So obviously, this is a pretty steep exponential. We have on the very bottom left, we have 1900. On the bo very bottom right, we have 2045 for the time horizon of this chart. Now let's look at this one. This is the world population in measurement of billions. So we have 10,000 BC to the year 2000. So if we zoom in a lot on this chart, we can find this one on there. And if we zoom out from this chart, we find this. Pretty interesting. This is a literal singularity. This is an actual explosion in the true sense of the word. Now, obviously, we don't really notice this. We don't really feel it as humanity. We don't really like go around and be like, wow, we're exploding right now, right? We just kind of sit here and act like nothing's happening, which a lot actually is. Now, if we zoom out even further, we can see this big boy. Now, as you could presume, if you zoom in on this, you get this, you zoom in on this, you get this, and if you zoom out from this, you get this, right? So what is this really? Well, this is uh, basically, let's, let's, use, let's try to make this as simple as possible. There is this thing called thermodynamics, which is basically, it's like a, a field of study of the laws of nature and basically the way the universe works as far as energy dissipation goes. Um, so you have entropy and you have energy and they're going through this big cosmic elegant dance and that's what causes literally everything to emerge, right? So entropy is kind of like the fighting force that causes order to go into chaos. It causes exponentials like this to emerge. All of these are forced by the function of entropy and energy colliding. Energy is kind of the force of life and entropy is the force causing life to try to make it go into chaos and like it's like the fighting force it's what causes all of these interesting things to happen it's what kind of dick not what i say dictates but it's a probabilistic type of function that, that uh cause a lot of complexity to merge so these exponentials like this kind of emerge from this phenomena of entropy and energy going into this elegant dance. And now if we zoom out far enough, you can imagine this entire process is just one big exponential. It's just one big singularity, kind of like this. If you zoom out far enough, this is just a little blip on the curve, just like this is a little blip on the curve. This is just one big exponential process that's only accelerating faster and faster and faster. Uh, things become only more complex as we go throughout the time of the universe. Things just become faster and faster. There aren't just taxes and death that are guaranteed in life. Acceleration is also guaranteed in life, right? That's kind of the thing that we need to take away from this is there is only one option, which is to keep going forward. Otherwise, you, will, you become the, the Neanderthal, the Homo habilis, and, you know, the other dudes on this the screen here. So if you want to know what it's like to decelerate, I would recommend to ask them. Otherwise, you probably don't want to decelerate. <laughs> um, let's put it that way. Now, obviously, I'm an accelerationist. Um, I think we will continue to expand as a species. I think we're going to have a very interesting, complex, and potentially amazing future. It might confuse us a lot because, you know, things are going to be changing drastically in our lifetimes. But I will say this, I do think resources in the 
universe are infinite. I think human potential is infinite and we can find the answer to all of our problems on the other side of complexity. But if we try to decelerate, it's not going to be a good story. Let's put it that way. The people who do accelerate, it might be pretty cool though. You might actually go colonize some different planets. Maybe we figure out how to do some in the form of, of as fast as light travel. We don't have to talk about those scenarios though, because they're not here yet. Um, other, other than that, I do think the future is going to be pretty amazing. Obviously, technology is kind of like the thing that raises the floor. That's like the only thing where that actually works. We've like throughout all of history of civilization, people have tried like different economic models like socialism and communism and things of that nature to try to raise the floor. And all it really does is it makes the floor lower and causes bifurcation. And the ruling class or the class that says, let's let's start these socialist incentives and then all of the people on the lower class say, yes, that's a good idea. All it does is it causes the upper class to have more power versus the lower class where they literally have strings on their arms and legs like their little puppets and now they can control the entire civilization because if you misbehave, we can take away your funding. Now, that's... Uh, that's leaning towards the conversations that are happening these days, which is terrifying to me. But I think um, the only way to actually raise the floor isn't through those type of economic models, but it's through technological acceleration, maximizing free markets, maximizing efficiencies in these free markets, and not over-regulating, not over-centralizing power, letting things be a healthy competition with I do think regulatory frameworks are important if implemented properly, right? I think we should have a proper algorithm for regulation. You should be able to remove regulations just as easy as you can add them. And you can allow for free market competition to raise the floor and cause decentralization of power and decentralization of wealth. I don't know if you've noticed, but if you actually look at it over many, 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 many decades or potentially centuries... Um, everybody's always blaming billionaires and all of their problems these days, but actually, uh, the difference between the poorest and richest people in society is the lowest it has ever been. You are actually have more power as an individual. I don't care how poor you are. You have more power as an individual now rather than any other time in history. And the only way that continues to happen is if free markets continue to exist and technology continues to raise the floor. That's why you become an accelerationist and you don't be the Neanderthal, right? So let's move on forward here. So here's how I think this bifurcation thing is likely to play out. So I think AI will improve drastically. It already is. The agentic time horizons for AI models is doubling about every four months. So basically, the ability for them to do reliable work is doubling about every four months, right? Over longer and longer time horizons. That means many markets will be disrupted, whether it's labor markets, the service-based business market, like the entire service-based business model, I think is already dead. People just don't know it yet. Same thing with most jobs. I think most jobs are gone. Most people just don't know it yet. Um, and I think this is going to be the beginning of the Great Divide. And I think the Great Divide's already starting. You are already starting to see, like, basically decelerationist UBI cult leaders trying to build these, like, socialist societies. And really all it is is, like, you get people like Sam Altman who have closed-sourced AI, and they have this world coin thing, and um, basically everybody within his big community, his big thing that he's building... They're going to be like these useless eaters that are being controlled by Sam Altman with his closed sourced AI. Like, let's ask ourselves, what is AI? It's the exocortex for the human. It's, it's literally an extension of your cognition. Now, if you have one closed source company where Sam Altman's controlling it, and he also controls the distribution of wealth through this world coin thing, you basically have this like dictator over all of everybody. And um, he kind of controls who gets the wealth. He controls how the intelligence is distributed. He controls all of these different things, right? And that's not really a good fault tolerant model. It's very, for one, it's very dangerous because everybody's kind of losing their individuality or they're becoming this like giant hive mind, this Borg like 
mind and um, it's fundamentally dangerous from that aspect. And Sam Altman also has control over you by via proxy of WorldCoin and the closed source models that are literally the extension of your cognition. So basically as a bunch of slaves um, versus a more federated, distributed, decentralized model, which I think would be much better. So I think this is already starting to happen. I think the UBI D cells or anybody who believes in the model that I just described is already kind of like behaving in that way. This is usually the type of people that comment on my videos and they say, well, ASI is going to render free markets obsolete. And I'm just like, the entire universe is free markets. <laughs> like free markets will never be rendered obsolete until the entire species dies. Again, there's only three things guaranteed in life. Death, taxes, and acceleration of free markets. Like those are the only three things guaranteed in life. These acceleration curves, this acceleration curve, this thing, it's just one big free market. There is no such thing as anything else but free markets. Welcome to the thermodynamic universe. So these ideas that Sam Altman has of like these different societal structures and free markets aren't going to exist anymore. It just doesn't make any sense at all. Um, it's a good way for Sam Altman to be competing in the free markets with his buddies and the upper rungs of society while everybody else is just kind of like living on UBI. And if they misbehave, Sam Altman pulls the plug. It's not really fault tolerant. It's very dangerous. And uh, yeah, you could probably play out some thought experiments from there. Now, look, I think the best way forward is to maximize free markets, maximize free trade, free speech open source information technology, including AI, having freedom of compute, actually having distributed computing infrastructure. Um, if you're new to the channel, you might not be aware, but I'm actually building a community platform where we actually are embedding all of these things into the operating system of the platform, where basically anybody who signs up, you will own your own data, you will own the data of the community that you're building if the people who opt into the community allow you to do that. Uh, basically, you'll be able to have your own a decentralized community. You can own it on your own hardware. We're going to have a distributed computing marketplace on the platform as well. Um, the platform is currently under development. It's not finished quite yet, but um, I think it's going to be awesome. So basically, what I want to say in this video is this is kind of like a natural selection type of phenomena. All of technology puts selective pressures on humanity. Your phone does, the internet does, your computer puts selective pressures on you. Like the people who use technology the best are usually pretty well off in society. It's just like a natural selection phenomena. Again, going back to free markets, those are the only things that exist. The free markets are a fantastic measurement for how well you are being selected for or how well you are trying to be selected for. Because um, again, free markets are the only thing that will ever exist in the universe. It's just one big free market. Now, I do think the economic paradigm of the free markets that we have today, I think it's shifting a little bit. I, it will still be free markets on the other side because that's the only thing that's physically possible without having a dictator that is playing in free markets by themselves. Um, that's the only thing that is physically possible is to have free markets. So I do think the um, the structure will change. Like currently you have like these companies who are selling these very specific products or they offer very specific services. I think free markets in the future are more so like civilizational scale. We're going from companies to network states, basically where pretty much any individual that is sufficiently capable or not even just capable, but sufficiently determined will be able to build like civilizations from scratch. Now that sounds pretty complex to some people or it might sound pretty large and like a very massive audacious goal that might not even be possible. It's actually very reasonable here, right here. I have listed on the left side of the screen, the first principles of civilization itself. It's literally energy, materials, intelligence, and labor, and community. Community is the part that I am building right now. I have a community linked in the description below. It is super cheap at the moment if you would like to join and help us build this distributed future. I think it's going to be very beautiful. Um, 
basically the goal, as I mentioned, is to, I'm building my own platform. We're going to have distributed computing infrastructure on the platform, basically a compute marketplace. Um, the entire platform is a freedom of thought, freedom of expression marketplace. Any ideas you have are welcome. Um, I think it's very fundamentally important. It's kind of like democracy. That's the only way it happens is if the, the free markets of speech, the free markets of thought, the free markets of labor, the free markets of human capabilities are what decides what happens. Free markets are literally the truest form of democracy. I think democracy is obviously a very powerful technology and um, techno democracy is something that's going to make the civilization that uh, has the best values, the best founding framework and the best incentives last the longest. So I think it's fundamentally important. I think that is the most important thing we should all be focusing on right now is accelerating with the technology. Again, this is like this is like a natural selection type of event. Everything puts selective pressures on the human and um, the only way to be selected for is to accelerate with the technology, increase your position in the free markets. If you're deciding not to do that, um, I don't know what to tell you. I'm just going to put it that way. I know some people have like these these uh, thoughts about like super intelligent AI and it's going to like replace all humans at all things that humans ever have done. And it's like, no, dude, like human certain part of human intelligence is not computational. It's, it's, it's not computable at all. I think that's why it's fundamentally important to have some reasonable uh, philosophical frameworks to help guide us through this revolution. And I think it's as simple as there's a certain part of human intelligence that's just not computable. And I think it has a lot to do with the limbic system. It has a lot to do with instincts. It has a lot to do with long-term decision-making and adaptive systems. Like, if you look at AI, it's really good at predicting static systems. It's absolutely terrible at predicting adaptive dynamic systems. Now, some people will say, well, look at full self-driving cars. They live or they operate in this dynamic adaptive system of an environment. And it's like, well, they're not making long-term decisions. They are making live reactions with the function of keeping the individual in the car alive like it's a live reaction of uh this external variable happens my decision changes right now it's not like it's computing everything that happens in the world all at once and that's kind of where people who are very good at long-term value investing where they're not just day trading or they're not just reacting but they're taking these long-term objective analyses and bets on the market, it's an instinctual type of thing that's not really computable. AI is probably never going to be good at that. I would actually bet that AI will never be good at that. Um, some people will argue to the death and say, well, one day we're going to create an algorithm with enough data where AI is going to be able to capture that. And I think there are certain things that are just not computable in the universe. And if you look at Stephen Wolfram, and any intelligent physicist, they will tell you the same exact thing. And I think intuition and uh, instincts are those types of things. So if you want to index your attention to be valuable for the foreseeable future, index your skills into uh, having a good intuition, a good instinctual understanding of dynamic and adaptive systems, basically being a CEO, we're basically all technomancers in the future. That's where we're actually going. Not all of these crazy sci-fi philosophical things that everybody's talking about. We're going to be basically technomancers where we're making long-term decisions. The AI is going to be able to get, the AI is going to be good at making daily and weekly decision-making things, maybe even monthly eventually. The human will be doing yearly and decade-long decision-making, and then eventually decade and century-long decision-making, maybe. We'll see. But, um, yeah, start with community and build your way up is basically where you uh, what everything is about here. So, that being said, I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.